The submandibular triangle is a region in the anterior triangle of the neck that lies just inferior to the body of the mandible, hence its name. If you've not already watched my video giving an overview of the anterior triangle of the neck, go take a look now. I'll wait here until you get back. The submandibular triangle is bordered by one muscle and one bone. The superior border is the body of the mandible, the anterior border is the anterior belly of the digastric muscle, and the posterior border is the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. The floor of the submandibular triangle is mostly composed of the mylohyoid muscle. It's easier to see the contents of the submandibular triangle from this inferior view. Most of the submandibular triangle is taken up by the submandibular salivary gland, which produces mixed serous and mucinous secretions, contributing around 70% of the saliva secreted into the mouth. The submandibular gland also helps facilitate lymphatic drainage into the 3 to 6 lymph nodes that reside within the triangle. The most significant artery within the submandibular triangle is the facial artery, which branches from the external carotid artery and passes behind the posterior belly of the digastric muscle and the submandibular gland before passing superficially over the mandible into the face. The facial artery also produces the submental artery, which courses anteriorly along the border of the mandible. The largest vein in the triangle is the facial vein, which passes superficial to the submandibular gland and the digastric muscle before joining the retromandibular vein to produce the common facial vein, which in turn drains into the internal jugular. The facial vein also receives a tributary from the submental vein. The most consistent nerves within the submandibular triangle all lie deep to the submandibular gland, so I'll remove it for easier viewing. We have the lingual nerve, the hypoglossal cranial nerve, and the nerve to the mylohyoid muscle. And there we go, that's all the relevant anatomy of the submandibular triangle of the neck. This is an important region to surgeons and is an area frequently examined during your studies, so I suggest taking some time to learn it well. I'll be releasing videos covering all parts of the anterior and posterior triangles of the neck, so remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. In the meantime, I hope you learned something and have a great day.